Hello, everyone. So our next speaker is Yimin Jing. He works for Baidu, and uh, today he will tell us about the how to interface Rust with C. Pitfalls, problems, uh, how to solve them, how to overcome them, because documentation is one thing, but experience is something else. So please welcome Yijing. Hi. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, so my talk's title is 1,000 Ways to Die in Rust FFI and How to Survive. So basically, I'm going to talk about uh, the lessons, the experiences we gain when we write Rust FFI code in our, uh, in our open source projects, actually in production. So my name is Yiming Jing. Uh, I'm a security scientist and engineer at Baidu X Lab. So I'm also the author of uh, MesaLink. Uh, basically, MesaLink is a uh, uh, a TLS library providing OpenSSL compatible C APIs for Rust TLS uh, or Rustos. So with MesaLink, we can bring Rust into many places where OpenSSL and C used to dominate. Uh, for example, Android, uh, a lot of places. Um, at Baidu, we have deployed MesaLink in our applications uh, running on Android-powered smart TVs. Uh, as of now, uh, from, from my colleagues, I heard that MesaLink has accumulated uh, about more than 4.5 million monthly active users, and it's rapidly growing. Uh, it's growing very fast. And in August, we managed to, to contribute code to the curl project. So MesaLink is currently one of libcurl's 12 TLS backends. And it is also one of the seven backends that support uh, TLS 1.3. And it, it is the only one which is written in Rust. And speaking of uh, our X lab, uh, so we are a research lab based in California, United States. Uh, and for Baidu, Baidu is the second largest research engine in the world and the biggest one in China. Uh, X lab is led by our chief security uh, scientist, uh, Lang Wei, and he's a big fan of memory safety languages like Rust. Uh, and we have uh, several uh, open source projects uh, which, is in, in, which are implemented by memory safe languages including Rust, Go, and RPython. And MesaLink is just one of them. And if you were at Rust Fest Paris earlier this year, uh, you may have seen our work about uh, bringing Intel SGX to the Rust ecosystem. So which is the Rust SGX project shown here uh, in the first row uh, and the second one from the left. So in today's talk, uh, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna share with you the experiences, the pitfalls, and the lessons we learned when we implement OpenSSL APIs in MesaLink with 100% Rust code. So first, uh, we'll start from a simple uh, Hello World FFI example and see how it ends in a disaster, a many box. So then I'm gonna cover 10 patterns and anti-patterns in writing idiomatic FFI code. And finally, a quick recap and future work. So throughout the code, is, uh, code examples in this talk, uh, if you've seen a green check mark, then it means this is a good pattern and we recommend using it. And if you see a, a red cross mark, then it means it is an anti-pattern. Uh, anti uh, it's not good to use. And a warning sign uh, means a pattern we suggest to use with caution because it may involve some unsafe code and some assumptions uh, you must be aware of before you use it. So let's start. So um, this is a hard work example from the Rust program language book or the textbook. So what it, it does is very simple. So it converts, uh, let, me, let, me, let me zoom in, so in case you can see it. Uh, so what it does is, is to convert a string literal, uh, which is hello Rust here, uh, to, uh, uh, it's not strong, uh, to a raw pointer. So the string can, can be used by some external C code. So the no mango, uh, no mango attribute here turns off Rust name mangoing. So this function can be exported and it makes the linker happy. So it works pretty well, but this function just says hello to Rust only. So here. Uh, so what if we want a function to say hello to more languages? So we got this one. Oh, let me zoom. Uh, this is, uh, we just add another parameter called who underscore PDR, uh, which, uh, which is a pointer to uh, a, a, a string in C. Uh, you can put maybe Python, maybe go here uh, to pass it to, a, to a, our Rust function. And this function body consists of only two, uh, 
it's essentially two lines of code uh, if you put the brackets on the same line. So the first line uh, converts the pointer uh, to a CSTR, and we convert the CSTR to a Rust string, a Rust STR. And we use the format macro to, uh, to concatenate hello with the, uh, with, uh, 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 with the input, and we return it as a pointer. So this function has several bugs um, in this that simple to launch the code. So maybe let's just spend a few seconds to see if we can find them. Um, okay, so um, maybe you can guess. Uh, I, I'll put red, five red cross marks here, so at least five bucks. So first, um, you may have noticed uh, the pointer. Uh, we haven't checked if the pointer is a uh, non-pointer, so that's the first one. And the second one, uh, the unwrap here may panic. And as you know, uh, uh, if a function panics, uh, it will trigger a stack unwinding. And a stack, uh, if the stack unwinds uh, across an alphabet boundary, then it is totally undefined behavior. And the third one, uh, the format macro here allocates uh, a, a string on the heap. Uh, but, but this one uh, 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 on the heap. But the string would be out of scope immediately after the function returns. So the returned pointer is, uh, is actually a dangling pointer. And at line 11, uh, as and as our PTR returns a row pointer of uh, a st at a star const u8. Uh, but here's the tricky thing. Uh, we want the function to return a star const c underscore char, uh, which is a type defined in the lib secret. Uh, but this one, c underscore char, could either be u8 or i8, depending on the target platform. So on different platforms, this could possibly be uh, a type mismatch. Uh, and finally, uh, because a C string is, uh, is an array of bytes which terminates with a no character at the end. And it, as you can tell uh, from here, uh, this string is not terminated with a no, uh, no character. So basically it doesn't return a valid C string pointer. So basically five bucks here in just that simple two lines of code. So you can see uh, it's not that easy to write a uh, correct uh, Rust FFA code. So next in the remain, uh, remainder of this talk, I'll be covering 10 tips uh, we gain when we write Rust FFA code. So the first one, uh, point, pointers anti-checks. So on top of everything, uh, always check for non-pointers. So it's not just for Rust, it's for every language we know, like Alexei, like maybe, if it has a pointer. So for this one, I'd like to say more about uh, checking opaque pointers. So when we implement the Mesa Link C APIs, uh, it is quite common that we generate an opaque pointer in Rust code and pass it to the caller in C. Uh, for example, the, uh, uh, let, me see, let me zoom in. If you, so the SLCTX one, uh, this type uh, is an example of such pointers in MesaLink. Uh, when the caller in C uses this opaque pointer, for example, as a parameter of SSO read, uh, defined here, uh, it is our responsibility to check if the pointer is indeed uh, uh, what the Rust code generated before, because the C part, uh, the C code may may just uh, may may just cast the pointer to some some type we don't know. So here the point is that we introduce uh, magic bytes. Uh, for example, here I uh, I use uh, uh, U32 as a magic bytes. Uh, we use the magic bytes as type identifiers. So uh, such magic bytes are used for every type of missile link that we may generate OP pointers for. We also add a trait called opaque pointer guard. Uh, and for each type that uh, we generate opaque pointers for, we implement this trait for them. And we also assign a different magic number, for example here. Uh, for, it, the number can be anything. Uh, it can be a U32, it can be an array of U8 bytes, uh, it can be anything you like. And you can, you can, uh, you can assign it maybe starting, uh, just in the function, so as a, con uh, as a constant. Uh, in Mesa Link, we do it differently. Uh, we initialize uh, this uh, this uh, this magic bytes uh, with a random function. So when your library uh, uh, when your library starts, so basically every time you run your uh, run our code, uh, the magic bytes will be different. So it, incre uh, it increases some difficulty for some bad guys to uh, reverse engineer our code and to do something bad with the pointers. 
So overall, um, the magic bytes carry uh, type information. So we don't lose it when we pass the raw point through C. In that case, uh, when, because the, the, the raw pointer doesn't, uh, because the C can do anything to the pointer. And when the C pointer is passed back to Rust code, we can check the magic bytes to make sure that it is indeed what we generated before. And for uh, this one, uh, let me sit back. So tip two is about type conversion. Uh, this is one of the most common mistakes. Uh, Rust strings are very different from C strings. So C strings are now terminated arrays of bytes, while Rust strings are Unicode encoded bytes. So the good thing is that Rust provides the CSTR uh, to, to handle the conversion. So the bad thing is that um, from underscore PTR here, it only accepts the row pointer as the input. But if you recall in C, for example, like STR and CPY, uh, it also has a, a parameter uh, of length. This is because from underscore PTR internally calculates the length of the string using uh, strlen. If you check the source code, you will see. So in some cases, if the input string, the pointer here, uh, if the input is not properly terminated at the right position, so you may you may you may you may, you, you may incur some uh, out of bound read. So as I suggest here, using the warning sign, uh, additional checks may be needed to verify if the C string is properly terminated at the right place. So otherwise, you will you will get an out of bound read. And here's the another one uh, I just mentioned before uh, about the libc create. Uh, it is either I8 or UA depending on the target. So in some platforms, for, uh, for example, on x86 platform, it, uh, uh, C underscore char is I8. But on ARM platforms, it is U8. So the solution is to implement two variants of the function, so for U8 and I8 respectively. Uh, another solution is to cast the slice with the help of raw pointers. Uh, with the pattern here, uh, this pattern is recommended in the documents of std column column um, memp column column transmute. Uh, without using transmute, you can also do it as well. Tip three is about getting C pointers from Rust strings and Rust objects. So we know that references carry lifetimes, so the bar checker can check the lifetimes for us. But the raw pointers are different. So we must make sure a variable always outlive its pointers. So for constant strings, literals in MesaLink, uh, for example, like this one, we u represent them as 30 U8 slices. And we manually add a null terminator at the end, like this one. So the, so the variable al always outlive the pointer. And for strings with a shorter lifetime, for example, local variables, uh, C string is a better way to do so. It creates a null terminated copy on the heap, and then we can leak a pointer with into raw. But, this, uh, but in the, this approach may leak memory, so if the leak string uh, is not freed later. Uh, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about it later in, in our talk. Uh, and for getting C pointers for Rust objects, uh, the similar rule applies. Um, a variable must outlive its pointers. Otherwise, you get a dangly pointer. So in the example here, uh, we are casting a reference as a raw pointer and use the pointer as a return value. So bang, uh, it's bad. So because the foo does not outlive foo pointer, you get a foo underscore PDR. You got a dangle pointer here. So what we do in MesaLink is we frequently use box into raw uh, to leak a pointer. So basically what we do is to transfer the ownership from, uh, from Rust to C uh, with into raw. So then we, uh, so in C code, we pass the, the pointer back to Rust and then we derive the raw pointer and things we and do other stuff again. Uh, tip four is a very interesting case. Uh, the comments not visible here. Uh, actually, it's, uh, it's a part of uh, Actic Web, Actix Web uh, if you've ever heard of it, uh, issue 289. So some, someone com uh, complains that uh, a lot of bad patterns were used in, in, in Actix Web. Uh, for, uh, uh, for example, like this. So we declare a uh, foo, which is, uh, contains a string, and we define um, immutable, uh, immutable uh, variable here, foo here. And we, it uses this kind of trick. And save, uh, you, you, cast, uh, you cast a reference as a star cons pointer and cast it as a star mute uh, pointer and dereference it. You get a, mu a mutable reference. 
and you can just manipulate it. Uh, it uh, the your bar checker won't complain a single word about it. So this is definitely a, a, a bad pattern. So don't do it. Yeah. So yeah. So but there, there's a, there's there's a cell and ref cell to help you do uh, uh, interior mutability. So don't use this one. Uh, memory allocation and deallocation uh, for tips five. Um, so actually, if they if you handle them improperly in unsafe ROS, so they may cause a lot of problems, uh, such as memory leaks and dangling pointers. So in safe ROS code, uh, the ball tracker usually identifies and prevents more than 99% of memory box. But if unsafe ROS code and row pointers kick in, so things start to get very complicated, and a special caution is advised. So here we show a non-exhaustive list of things that needs your attention. For example, uh, the format macro, uh, as I said, it all allocates a string on the heap. And the reference counting RC and ARC are also on the heap. And auto scope variables are also uh, implicitly deallocated. So the last one, into raw, uh, needs some little bit of discussion. So we know that the box into raw can be used to leak a pointer. So the question is, can we uh, call into raw in ROS and free it in C? So if ROS and C use different memory allocators, uh, like a few months ago, uh, before global, al uh, global alloc is stabilized, so the answer is definitely no, because uh, your, your system allocator and uh, ROS gym alloc, may, uh, they don't share information. Uh, in general, we also don't recommend doing so because we think the best way is to allocate in ROS and deallocate in ROS and allocate in C and deallocate in C. So ROS and C are totally two separate worlds. Only they communicate with the FFI interface. And tip six is about panics in FFI code. Uh, basically, what's the bad thing is that panics may trigger stack unwinding and unwinding past the boundaries undefined behavior. Um, so the suggestion uh, in the documents is to use catch unwind uh, uh, to, to catch the stack unwinding at the boundaries. And in MesaLink, we also use the rustic error handling pattern uh, along with MesaLink's uh, internal error queue to handle this kind of panics. So despite that we can catch and stop stack unwinding using catch unwind, uh, it doesn't mean that we can just let our rust code panic. Uh, it's bad. Panics are kind of good for in terms of preventing undefined behaviors, but panics also have a negative impact on user experiences. So in MesaLink, we always prefer to write some robust panic-free Rust code. So these are the things that may panic at runtime. For example, uh, ref cell panics if the dynamic power checking fails. Uh, copy from slice panics if the sizes of the source and destination slices uh, don't match. Uh, the unreachable macro also panics if it's indeed reached. And dynamic, over, dynamic overflow checks also panic if it's turned on. By default, it is off. Uh, it's your choice to turn it, on or, or turn it on or off or not. So also to watch for is dependencies and callback functions because you don't know if they are panic free or not. So really be careful. Um, tip seven is about uh, converting file descriptors. Uh, so we are talking about uh, C underscore int and the libc uh, kind of file to kind of file descriptors. Uh, actually, uh, in Rust, uh, you can use uh, the from raw R uh, FD, uh, sorry, typo here, uh, from raw FD, uh, at least for Unix, uh, to convert file descriptor into Rust objects like file uh, or TCP stream. But the problem is that this function usually doesn't validate the file descriptors. So uh, we don't know if the file, uh, file descriptor is good until a later operation returns some IO errors. Uh, maybe maybe such cannot be connected. So what we suggest here is we validate in the file descriptor with libc's fc and tl, so we can know if the file descriptor uh, really exists, re uh, it is valid or not. And for the libc's file pointers, uh, because Rust and Rust SD do not have such types, so we still have to use the unsafe libc uh, using FD open and file number, we can convert a file pointer to an uh, uh, integer file descriptor. And tip eight is about uh, uh, com copying data from C into Rust. So basically, we have three approaches uh, to do so. Um, first, uh, it can we can use uh, the libc uh, as, as we did in C. Uh, we use mem copy and mem move. It works, and of course, it's not the rustic way to do it. 
the second approach, we use the PTR concom copy non-overlapping. It also works. Uh, it is essentially semantically equivalent to a mem copy uh, in C. Uh, but personally, I still prefer the third one using a combination of PTR concom from raw parts plus uh, slice concom copy from slice. The reason is, um, so using from raw parts, uh, you can get a slice and you got a chance to validate the buffer uh, before you do some further actions on it. Uh, for example, if you are dereferencing a pointer, which is a C string, so by from using from raw parts, you get a U8 slice. Uh, you can check if the, the buffer is terminated with a null character at the end. And using copy from slice, you get a free uh, uh, you get a free boundary checking because uh, copy from slice so you check uh, the length of the source and destination slices if they match. If they don't match, it will panic. So overall, uh, using the third approach, we get more control and also free security checks. Uh, this is the one is the most interesting one uh, about converting C enums to Rust enums. Uh, uh, C and ROS, uh, C, uh, C enums are nothing like ROS enums, uh, despite ROS support C style enums. So ROS enums are essentially a range of uh, integers uh, where you cannot def define duplicate values. But in C, because they are just simply integers, you can do so very easily. For example, you can see uh, I have level default equal to two, also level high is two. But in ROS, you just cannot do it uh, because uh, uh, because uh, in Rust, Rust numbers are a range of numbers. Uh, no duplicate values allowed. So the workaround to this problem uh, is to use uh, defines in header files. Uh, this is a header file. So we use the preprocessor Marco to define level default to level high so we can kind of bypass this problem in Mesolink. And this one, uh, because as I said, uh, C enums are just integers. So if you are trying to convert a C enum to a Rust enum, uh, don't use uh, don't use transmute because if you uh, don't if you transmute uh, an uh, an an integer to a Rust enum, you may encounter some kind of undefined behavior. So if the the value is not in the range of the you know, the Rust enum. So what we do in Mesalink is we use the uh, from into treat uh, to check if the value is uh, in the range. So it is not, uh, it is level un undefined here. So always validate a, a C now before you convert it into a Rust now. Uh, and this one is pretty interesting I will share with you. Uh, so Mesalink, uh, in Mesalink, we sometimes need to get a uh, star chart pointers for some uh, for some names uh, for some name, names on of some enum variants. Uh, in Rust, we can do it easily with derived debug, and we can use something like this uh, format a column question mark to get the name of the variant. Uh, for example, compression levels uh, like level high, level low, level le level default, something like that. Uh, but in but in order to leak a pointer of it, it's become very hard to so uh, to do so. So we actually struggled quite a lot. We have several attempts. So the first time that we just used the formatter, uh, it allocates a string on the heap and return a pointer, and we cast it as a raw pointer. But as I have said in tip two and five, it's not right because the the allocated string does not out outlive the pointer. So basically, a dangled pointer here. So in our second attempt, we learned something uh, from our mistakes. So we start to use C-string. Uh, so the string is probably terminated with a null character at the end. And we unwrap and we interrupt a leak pointer. Uh, leak pointer. So now the pointer uh, has a longer lifetime, but uh, I would say it works, but it allocates memory on the heap. Uh, so it may lead to some memory, memory leaks. Uh, so please see our tip five and six for uh, for that one. So basically, we find it's very hard to do so. And finally, we came up with our own create with procedure macros and custom derive. So find our create on Chris and I O, and it's pretty easy to use. And here are some external tools we find pretty useful uh, when we write our Rust uh, FFI code. Uh, please give them a try and see if they fit our needs. So for example, I always use Wargreen to find memory leaks caused by improper use of box into raw. And cargo clippies lints often give me surprises about writing idiomatic Rust code. 
and also it helps me avoid some unnecessary unsafe code. And some acknowledgement on the materials I, I found pretty helpful. So the Rust, uh, Rust Nomicon is definitely a must read. And Michael Brown's unofficial FI book provides me uh, useful insights into error handling uh, in Rust and C, and also some tips about integrating cargo into the CMake build system. And my thanks also go to the previous talk on RustFest and RustConf, so many excellent talks on this topic. So a uh, quick recap. So tip one is about checking uh, pointers. Uh, uh, we, we, we use some magic bytes uh, as type identifier to do so. Uh, tip two is about uh, converting, uh, uh, converting between, uh, conversion between C and Rust types. So we mentioned about strings. And tip three is about cutting a C pointers from, from Rust objects uh, like strings or some anything like uh, anything. And tip four is about raw pointers, uh, not for bypassing the bar checker. I showed you a counter example, so do not do that. And tip five is about memory allocation and data allocation. Uh, something bad can happen if you are not aware of it. And also FFI uh, code uh, virtual panics because uh, unwinding past the boundary is the undefined behavior. And tip seven is about converting file descriptors uh, like integers or libc column file pointers. Tip eight is about copying data from C into Roth. I showed you three methods to do, do so, and I personally, I prefer the third one. And tip nine is about converting C nums into Roth, and the final one is about external tools. <coughs> and this is it. Yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming to my talk. Yep, and I'd like to take any questions. Okay, okay, sorry for that. Do we have any question, right? Yeah. There. Do you have any tips uh, for uh, handling uh, C libraries that uh, internally use a uh, static mutable state? Uh, pardon me? Uh, whether do you have uh, any ideas uh, about how to uh, create FFI bindings to libraries that internally have uh, a static mutable state. Because I uh, actually ha have uh, such use case that I yeah. use library that has static mutable state and uh, well, that it's tough to do in Rust. So whether you have yeah. any advice on this. So personally, uh, I don't know if such queries exist. I know some good ones like EasyFFI and, and also like CBind Jane Price, a good example of automatically doing so. Um, I don't know yet, but uh, we, are, we are still working on this direction. <laughs> Thank you. Other questions? There were, there's a hand over there. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, I'm interested to know uh, your ideas on uh, how you handle uh, errors uh, across the FFI. For example, when you're uh, dealing with a C code that is using like status code and how you convert that back to uh, like proper Rust errors. And also if you're doing the other way around, if you have uh, something that's calling Rust via FFI, how do you handle uh, uh, no. So the on errors. the Rust side, we have uh, in Missing we have several macros to help you turn a Rust result to some uh, like C error code because OpenSSL use error codes, uh, basically integers. But Rust has its results uh, and also some like errors and failures. This kind of error handling creates. So basically, at the boundary, we convert 
uh, them between. Uh, from Rust to C, as I said, I have the macro doing so. And from C to Rust, we defined a few uh, from and into trees implementations to convert uh, the C error numbers to some Rust errors. So we can use, to, we can okay. use more. Thank you. Other question? Okay. Okay. Okay, we're done. Yeah. Great. We're done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you.